feel like I'm at the Oscars with all the music and the lights. Thank you very much, ICT Academy, for inviting me to share some thoughts. It's a privilege to be here on your 10th year where you have innovation, uh, collaboration, and education as the three buzzwords because those are the words that are really close to our heart. I've tried to use the term champion woman in the power to give back, but I wanted to edit my slide after I heard Romy because I need to say the power of sharing. You're absolutely right. I like that thought much better. But giving back is comes to us women naturally. We're used to being altruistic. We thrive really well when we share what we have or what we know. Just to put it in perspective, I'll spend just a couple of minutes to talk about the initial part of the journey so that I can bring up to speed what I hope to share with you as the need, the global challenge of women being championed. So we use champion as a noun and a verb. At Global Adjustments Foundation, we champion women. So we help the champion and the woman come out of her, but we also champion the cause of helping the woman, enabling the woman to self-power so she can stay longer in the workforce. It started when um, So it started, my journey started in speaking up for India, as you heard. We started a relocation service. And we started with one American and me, one Indian, just when Narasimha Rao government opened up the FDI possibility for India. And the whole job that we had to do was to speak up for India by speaking up for our soft power. Because every FDI company that came into India had so many concerns about our infrastructure, about the weather, about what school they're going to put their kids in, how they're going to get on with the Indian mindset versus their own cultural mindset, and so on, and even about the mosquito. So our job was speaking up for India and highlighting the positives while downplaying and explaining how to get over the challenges of its negatives. So when BMW first came, um, and the initial chair of the worldwide board came with his team. They looked at 16 states in India to say, where shall we set up our plant? And Peter, the guy on the extreme right, was the first president of BMW India. And their um, whole goal of coming to India was to understand, is there going to be a luxury market? What are we going to do here? Should we have a green plant? Or we, are we going to bring completely knockdown uh, systems and so on? You know now, of course, BMW being here is history, and they've done really well. My own story, though, from this that I learned as a life lesson that later became the curriculum of the Champion Woman programs is know yourself, know the other, and then speak up. What I meant here is they gave me one hour. They said, oh, he's coming on his private jet. He has one hour. Just tell him all about Indian history, culture, business in one hour. How can we do that, right? But I tried to practice and rehearse it all and finished well in time and actually spoke up and said, I hope you enjoyed that introduction because here I am bringing you back to the Taj Coromandel. And you know, Dr. Reithofer, it's only 59 minutes. So we're very aware of time. So we knew as women in our global adjustments team that the Germans value time. We knew that India needs more time to un be understood, but let's speak up for our own um, positives and about our country. That helped because later when BMW was looking for a relocation vendor, we were chosen until today we are able to serve them in the for-profit business. Lesson number two came as networking, which is a key tool that we need to leverage. And we women have the power of networking, but we are a little reticent about using it. I don't know, if I ask for something, they may ask me back for something and I can't do it. Or if I ask for something, they'll think, see, she always had this behind her mind and that's why she was friends with me. So we women have a bigger challenge and we had to get over it, right? So as a team, we worked when we had that client come to India. You recognize him, right? 
He's usually dressed like that in a dhoti and angavastram, right? Do you recognize him? All of you use him or his services all the time. I think there's even someone from his company as a speaker here today. Yes? Yes, Jeff Bezos. So when Jeff came, there was a business culture program that we did on just, you know, coaching or just sharing thoughts on how do you do business with India. Um, and it was a delight to be able to work with someone of his caliber. But the thing is, as I said, while we had spent all of this time working with him, he asked this question. He's like, Okay, tell me about retail behavior. Great. Um, you know, he has a wonderful laugh and he was laughing and at all our jokes. We were happy. And he said, tell me about retail behavior. So I had to find the courage to say, you know, I'd love to tell you about retail behavior. But sitting inside my office in Raja and Namalepuram with bodyguards that are here with you, it's going to be a little difficult to explain it. Can you come shopping to Nali stores and I'll show you what retail behavior is? So he pulled off the bodyguard, got in the car, and came to Nali. And at the store, it was really easy to show retail behavior. There was a bride getting married. There were all her. How many people around a bride in India to choose the sari? Yes. Is this better? Is that better? Chitti says yes. Amma says no. All public opinion is consensus building, right? So I showed him. Retail behavior, family decides. Second. Somebody was showing him the, her the colors, and she was like, oh, that's nice, that one's nice. Oh, and then the aunt says, why are you taking purple? Your cupboard is full of purple saris. Why don't you take yellow? You know Radhika was wearing that in that TV serial, and it was lovely. Okay, chosen, yellow is taken. Celebrity endorsement is very important for retail behavior. Easy to show these things for us in our world of, uh, of India. So the lesson there that we learned is, we women are good at building relationships. We build, 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 but shall we also just leverage that to our goal and use maybe the boss in the office who actually believes in you, say to him, I'm actually free next week. Is there any opportunity for me to be in that training program? You have to leverage that and be able to build it. This is the kind of curriculum that we were able to build into, into our program. So with Jeff, of course, we said we'd love to work with Amazon. And Amit Agarwal, who's now the country head, was there with Jeff at that training program in our offices. And we boldly spoke and asked for business. So those were the life lessons. And when I went to Harvard, it was great because they taught us all about gender intelligence. That word even in India wasn't that clear, right? They coined the word gender intelligence. And being on the Harvard Kennedy School's Women's Leadership Board, I had the privilege of meeting some amazing women and learning from them. But there are things that they don't teach at Harvard, as that famous book says, because they tell you about gender intelligence. They tell you that the man's brain and the woman's brain is wired differently, and that being able to communicate with that knowledge in mind is much more effective. For instance, I sent a WhatsApp message to someone in this audience yesterday, which was six sentences long, asking whether he would attend something that we were going to. And after reading the whole six sentences, he responded with one word, pass, P-A-S-S. -S. And I was thinking, what is this? Now, if you knew that the woman's brain uses 50% more words than a man, and this has been proven at Harvard, then you would not take offense when men use less words in communicating back with the women. And men, you wouldn't freak out if women said a lot and then you said what are you actually telling me because this is just the way we are wired now all this they teach at harvard but what they don't teach which is important in our women's curriculum is being quietly assertive in our culture this out there aggressive woman doesn't really work being quietly assertive becomes a very important tool and they don't even understand, what do you mean you've got to get your mother-in-law's support? You mean you live with her? What? Whereas for us, taking the whole family along with us, actually the mother-in-law can totally advance a woman's career. And I believe that in our program, we actually spend time on role-playing. How are you going to tell your mother-in-law that next Saturday you absolutely need to go to work, though it is Vinayak Chaturthi? You're going to outsource the karakata making, 
the moduks to another uh, from the shop and bring it on a plate to her. That's how you're going to do it. But you're going to keep the goodwill of the family along with your career because that's the only way work-life balance can happen. So these three things, the fact that we need to speak up, the fact that we need to leverage and build relationships, and the idea that we have to take our own cultural mindset into the Western way of gender intelligence became part of our champion woman curriculum. And then how do you do that? We decided that the champion woman would become a program which the foundation would underwrite and we would go into schools, colleges and workforce and run them free of cost to the corporation and say uh, and run the program with actual hands-on um, activities but also role, role plays and role models in our life coaches. So first I had to find the who. So you know the Jim Collins thing of first who then what. We had, I had the privilege of finding Usha Ramakrishnan, who is the director of our foundation, who's an amazing woman. After 16 years of working in HSBC Bank, she gave that up to come and become a trainer, a life skills trainer, and then now she's able to implement the mission and the vision of the foundation, along with being an amazing coach herself. Today, she's not here with us because she's training 900 girls in SIT college. The girls are all thumping their hands for the triple talaq that's come through because we have a lot of Muslim girls in SIET college and she's doing the program there today. But along with that came all the life coaches that we together were able to build as a team. And it's been amazing because women like Jayashree and Lakshmi who are here with me today, a couple of our life coaches, are actually doing it as their individual social responsibility. They've given up their careers of 28 years in IT for Jayashree, 18 years of banking for Lakshmi, but they're all trainers and life coaches who have come into the fold. And that's why I think our curriculum worked well. And that's the reason why we were able to reach 100,000 women and girls in these programs in the past three years. Um, so what do we do in the program? Let's see, before that, can you look at this quick quiz and give me an answer? Why are we even doing this? Why do you feel like you need to self-power a woman from within? We're already doing all these in our boot camps. We're doing um, programs on life skills. This is different. This is giving the woman the space to know that she's already powerful, giving her the life lessons that she needs to take forward so that she takes her community, her family, and the nation along with her. But why? Why now? Because if 27% of men are enrolled in tertiary education in India, which is a fact. How, what percentage do you think are women? The World Gender Gap Report gave us the statistics. Here are three numbers. Kon Banega Karodpati, 37, 17, or 27? 37? If it had been 37, it would, be, it would have been even better than the men, right? We would have more women educated. But the truth is, it is exactly the same as men. So equal number of men and women are getting tertiary education in India. But here's the other startling fact, startling. So 79% of those educated men are coming to the workforce. How many percentage of women of the educated, tertiary educated women do you think are making it? 27, 57, 79. Who said that? What is the number? 27. Yes. So if that is the case, it is startling, right? So that means after they're getting their college education, where are 50% of the women disappearing to? They're starting their careers, early, early, early uh, college, to coming into workforce. But after that, I think it's the low, we found that it's the low self-confidence as well as ineffective crisis management when there are milestones in life that we have to handle that lets them leave their career. And that's why women attrition has been a big uh, buzzword in the industry. And our job, we have taken it as our job to narrow the workforce gender gap for India by spreading the champion woman program so they can balance for better, you know, balance work and life. How do you balance? You know, when they tell you to raise one leg and balance, can you do that? It's hard, but if you tighten your core, my trainer tells me this, if you tighten your core and you keep your eye fixed on one spot ahead of you, you can stand with balance much longer. 
Anybody wants to try it? Try it at lunchtime. What happens is the same thing for the champion woman. In our programs, we tell her, tighten who you are inside. Become happy with yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, you are unique, you're fabulous. You don't need everybody to come and pat you on the back. You know, wear that beautiful sari, go in front of your husband and say, hey, I'm wearing a new sari today. So that he can say, oh, I noticed it, that was great. Because you don't need somebody else to tell you, you can become the champion of your life. And we are hoping to augment the self-confidence and manage the crises. So here are the topics that we teach in the Champion Woman programs. It starts with self-esteem building, which is right at the base core of what a woman needs. And when you do this, she raises herself by the power of her own will. Self-motivation becomes completely possible. In gender understanding, it is important to know that if you can communicate and adjust your communication, you'll get way better results. So the whole gender understanding program is based on neuroscience, but also with practical role model experiences of what each of us has faced. And then we have the leadership thinking or fitness and grooming, and all of this I know you do in boot camps, but women will attend it and then not actually take action. We found that at the end of the whole cycle, their work-life integration has become better because they have put themselves first. Instead of culturally, women are always putting ourselves a little bit last, right? We're serving the food to everybody and then we're eating by ourselves sometimes, traditionally. Now, can we just take that step forward for ourselves and take uh, onus of our own growth? That's how we're trying to do it and we are hoping that Many, many stories have come back to us about the impact it has created on them, and we're hoping that we will be able to work with a lot of you, your corporations and women, so that we can scale the number of women that become champion women. These are two stories really quickly. Remponi is a 31-year-old Nagaland mother, single mother, who used to work in a government job in Nagaland, and in the Northeast, you know, you get a government job, you get a paycheck, but there's no work to be done. You're just sitting around because there is no work. So she had, um, she used to have not had the courage to tell her parents that she wanted to do something else. After our program, she came here for a week long. We brought the Nagaland group, and we had the chairman of ICT, Mr. Lakshmi Narayan, speak to them as well. Uh, she went back and used the quietly assertive style that we have always taught our women, and she said, I'm going to start a car garage unheard of in her community, a woman running repair shop for cars. Today she's successful as an entrepreneur with her 10-year-old girl as a single mother and her car garage. Or Aishwarya, who has become, who was about to get married, she was an MOP Vaishnav last year student, and she said that she was able to talk to her parents and say, I am a superb artist, I need to build my own theater group. So now she's performing and creating jobs for other cultural people in her group and is balancing her life beautifully. Daimler often says to us that the gender understanding that we spread in the, Ger in the German factory where they make the buses, um, now the men need some empowerment because the women have become so bold about speaking up. But this has been the privilege that we've heard back that it's impactful. So our CSR then is this. Can we encourage women and girls in our companies and in our families to be confident about a career path, to go ahead and emotionally look after their own wellness so that that steady mind helps her manage her crisis? And can we build a beautiful, resilient leadership skill in every woman? Because it is hidden out there. So please join your CSR to our CSR, and we totally can strengthen the new India that we are looking forward to. Let's lead, I think it was Modi who said, women-led development instead of developing women. We totally believe in that. Please tell us if we can be of use to you. My team has left you a nice, pretty little Lakshmi as a good wishes for um, the Navaratri and the Diwali that's coming up. And we believe too, Nari to Narayani, because a woman does come with self-power from within. Thank you very much, including me.